Good morning and welcome to the show. Uh, our friends at Marine Max here on Panama City Beach want to share with you the wonders of boat ownership and the wonders of boating here. Now we're going to get a sneak peek at the wonderful world of Sea Ray Boats. I don't know about you, but I want a boat now. And thanks to our friends at Marine Max for sharing that with us. And now, to your Waking Up With Don Weather. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Alan Graham from Counts Real Estate to get some real estate tips. And today we're gonna to talk about condos. Yes, yeah, a lot of people uh, always wonder about condos, Don. And uh, they approach us with uh, personal investment, uh, opportunities there and they're also looking at personal use for them and yeah so. you know and I, I asked you beforehand is it a good investment it is not a good investment because we've toyed with the idea for a long time always wanted one no one needs one I suppose unless you're gonna live in it year-round but right and, and there's a lot of special things that you have to know about condos and that's why it's really great to get somebody that's familiar with them first of all you can't always borrow money on a condo some uh, condos because of their uh, HOAs or homeowners associations not being financially sound, lenders won't lend on them. And so there's a specific group that uh, lenders check each month and they can actually move on and off the list of those that are uh, acceptable. There are other issues there that are there, lawsuits and things like that, but you need to check with that 
first. Uh, the second thing you need to do is most people come down from Alabama or Georgia and they want to use their lender. They got a buddy they play golf with, a banker that's going mm -hmm. to give them a special deal. And 99% uh, of the time that never really works out because the lender doesn't understand all the nuances of uh, lending on a condo and what has to be uh, verified by the uh, So you really need a, a, somebody to finance that thing that understands the ins and outs of condo ownership. Yes, and we've got a, a list of local lenders and it's always best to use a local lender in that uh, that uh, understands that, that keeps up with the uh, HOAs. Uh, to they make know sure the local market. Know the local mm -hmm. market, correct. Yeah, and they know who's naughty and nice. There you go. Now, you know, if, I, if, if you say you've got your homeowner, you've got a family, maybe you've got right. a little money, and you want to get a condo and say, well, I'd like to have a place here on the beach, so mm -hmm. maybe we have a place to, you know, go for a week or two a year, or when sure. relatives come in from out of town, we have a place to offer them. Could I uh, get that set up in a way that that condo would pay for itself as a rental uh, all, all the other times? That's a great question, and the reason it's a great question is there's some rule of thumb numbers that we use. Uh, typically, a one bedroom unit on the water will generate between fourteen and sixteen thousand a year. A two bedroom will generate between twenty two and twenty six thousand a year, and a three bedroom will go as high as forty thousand a year in gross income. Uh, to, for you to have that unit to break even, the rule of thumb is you need to put forty percent down. The other side of condo lending that I didn't get to was that you can't do it like a 30-year mortgage you have on your home. It's going to be a 15-year, it's going to be an adjustable rate, and you're going to have to put 25% or more down uh, with a condo. So people assume that it's a 30-year mortgage and they calculate it on their own and they say, I could easily make these payments, but when I throw the 15-year scenario in and 25% down, it kind of changes their thought process. So yeah, I, I imagine it would. You got to come up with a, a pretty substantial down payment, mm -hmm. and and I guess the more you can put down, obviously, you know, the lower your payments will be in the final equation. And right. Will the, will the rents cover all that? I wonder. Uh, the answer to that question is if you put forty percent down, it will. And if you don't take out the prime time of rental, the Fourth of July or the big holidays when rents are their highest. Uh, the answer to that question is yes, they'll easily cover that. Uh, my suggestion would be, if you're just thinking about it, would be to get into a, uh, a smaller one bedroom or a two bedroom, and that acts as a hedge against inflation for the future. Let's say you hold it for five to seven years, and the market has a tendency to go up. Uh, right now we're increasing at about 15% per year on the condo prices from the oil spill days. You have to mm -hmm. understand 2010 set the low bar for that. Uh, so we're on the rebound at 15% per year for most condo projects. Uh, so uh, in the event you want to buy five years from now a big three bedroom, you've got the opportunity to sell your two bedroom and the uh, impact on your pocketbook is not as great in, in five years because you've got equity built up through appreciation in that unit. You know, you had mentioned early in the interview something about the, the hoe is being solvent or at least being uh, above board somehow. H how do you choose a, a, a condo complex and how do you know if a hoe is, 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 is up to the job? Uh, your lender here locally always sends them what's called an estoppel letter uh, six months prior to any real estate deal and that estoppel letter requests information on uh, past due accounts, current assets, uh, and how much they've got in reserve for replacement. The one thing you don't want to do is walk into a condo, buy it, and then have a special assessment because they haven't had their reserve for replacements maintained at what the state recommends their reserve for replacements are. So are certain thresholds that are required of a HOA, and if they don't have them, you want to steer clear of those guys. That's, a, that's exactly right. Alan Graham, I learn something every time you come on the show. Thank you so much for coming on and getting us smart on condo ownership and shopping. Thank you, Don. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Allison Smith from Herb Effects. I'm going to get some gardening tips yet again. Allison, what do we got here? We have two crepe myrtles, which are the staples of the South. Everyone loves their crepe myrtles. I've got some at my house. And mm -hmm. half of the population thinks you have to do this. And this is crepe murder. So, yeah, you have to trim them because they do get a little wild, right? They get a little wild, <laughs> but everyone <laughs> wants to cut them back to the same knot. You so, see these four trees all over town with these huge knots. So, there is absolutely no scientific reason for cutting them back. They do not make them bloom better. It controls the size. 
That's, that's all, all it does. It, if it's too oversized, you can do it, cut it back. But, but do if you not, don't want to trim it at all, it's okay, right? Yeah, they're going to do great. They mm -hmm. absolutely, you can trim, not let them ever cut them, and they're beautiful. They but get if you, huge. But if you trim like this, you have com committed crepe murder. Crepe murder, yes. Okay. There is absolutely no reason for doing this to your tree. Oh, um, this poor tree. We are going to give you some will tips. It, will it come back, though? Of course. Okay. Uh, so we really didn't murder it. We, no, no. They're going to come back. No problem. We just kind of maimed it. But what mm -hmm. happens when you do this and you cut back to the exact same spot every year, it bushes out. So you have like every tip has 10 or 15 limbs mm -hmm. that pop out. Well, what happens is they're all the same height. So you get this massive amount of limbs. Well, there's no airflow through there. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do this and you want to control the size, then after all the limbs do pop out, Go back and thin those. Take half of the limbs off because crepe myrtles are really, really bad. We're so humid in this area. You get aphids, you get bugs, and yeah. when they're all the same, all those limbs, and there's no air going through, you'll see the black goo on the leaves. That's mm -hmm. a sign that you've got bugs. So if you're going to go back to that same notch, cut, change your notch spot, um, after the, all the limbs do kind of come out in the spring, thin them out. Okay, so, so what's the proper way we should be trimming gonna, it? This is not gonna, the way to do it. No, this is what we're going to do. One, you want to look for, if you can see right here, you have some broken limbs. If you get a broken limb or a damaged limb, you want to cut it. And you want to cut as close to the tree as you possibly can. Um, all these small, little tiny limbs, that's just going to have leaves on it. Again, it's going to make that a lot of, limit your airflow in the middle. So you want to cut all those little tiny, just twigs off on the inside of your tree. Um, and you want to look for, if you can get down here, mm -hmm. we have a limb that is actually rubbing on another limb. Oh, and that's you no good. You don't want to have mm -hmm. any limbs uh, rummy, rubbing on each other. So you want to cut, if I can get in here, cut that one off really tight. Um, and you may have to come back and do a little touch-up trim work with some smaller cutters. But you want to get off anything that's rubbing. So you're going to take all these guys off. All these little fellas. All those little things. All you get, these little, They can almost little, even break off with your hand, Some I suppose. Some of them yeah. will. Yeah, their little ones will. Mm -hmm. But you want to go, say you want to kind of cut your height back. You want to go to a V. So mm -hmm. right here is a perfect example. You have That's a V, a natural a v. v. Mm -hmm. You want to cut a little bit of an angle. And there you go. There is a perfect V. That's going to sprout out nicely. All these little guys, again, they're wasted. You're going to take mm -hmm. those off. And let's say you have a limb such as this that just it hasn't had a fork yet, kind of similar height here. Cut All right, back. so it's okay to cut it in the middle if you just want to keep it the same right. height. Yeah, you're gonna kind of. So like this guy this has no young, no V at all. So right, so we're gonna pick kind of a similar height, not exactly the same. Cut at an angle. Now this one actually does have. You could imagine that could become its first V. Mm -hmm. So we'll cut it right there. So about, that's going to actually make a little V. What about the shape of this thing? Do you want it to be like taller in the middle or does it make a it's difference? It's kind of a preference for you and mm -hmm. it's also a preference on the variety of crepe myrtle. Some actually grow more in that V shape. Mm -hmm. um, you can, sometimes you'll see crepes that have one. Crepes naturally have multi trunks, but you'll see crepes that are on one single trunk. Mm -hmm. It's called a standard. They usually cost more because they're having to be trained mm -hmm. to get up like that. But um, same thing, you're going to trim, trim all the crepes same. exactly the same. And crepes are really bad to shoot suckers off the roots or off the very bottom of the trunk. So you want to get rid of those too. Cut those back. They just yeah, pull yeah, away yeah. from the rest of the plant. Yeah. So, so basics, cut at the V. Yes, sir. Do not commit crepe murder. No crepe murder. Get rid of all that little stuff and yes, the suckers sir. and just control the size. There you go. Thank you so much, Allison Smith from Herb Effects. Yeah. Now I know how not to commit crepe murder. Yes, avoid and that. And we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Beverly Lewis and Mike Howe, and we're going to talk about death by chocolate. Death by chocolate. I mean, we've heard about it in town for quite a while yes. now, but what exactly is the purpose of this event? Death by Chocolate is a fundraiser for, uh, for Emerald Coast Business Women's Association, and we uh, fund scholarships locally uh, to any uh, higher education institution locally for students age 23 and over. So we like to look at it as a hand up. People who uh, kind of fall between the cracks of typical scholarships. And we've given over $160,000 wow. over the last 16 years. This is our 16th annual event. Our theme is Sweet 16. Sweet 16 yes. is, is the, now, now Mike, you were a winner uh, of last year's event? Right, uh, Panama Country Club was the winner. It was our first, first time uh -huh. entering. 
and uh, one on our, our, our virgin voyage, I guess, into uh -huh. Death by Chocolate. So, <laughs> You know, um, uh, it's a competition, isn't it, Mike? Yes. I mean, the whole Death by Chocolate is, you know, local chefs get together and they put out their best product. And then we, the public, come, uh, 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 Beverly, and we get to vote, don't we? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. All of our guests get to vote. And by the way, I want to mention that tickets are available in advance. Um, all of our members have them, and they're available at the Ice Center in North Florida, both locations out on the beach mm -hmm. and in town. We've got them at Cadence Bank. We've got them at an NHC Home Care. And we've got them out on the west end, uh, I'm sorry, the east end at Callaway Country Florist. Mm -hmm. uh, Shirley has uh, provided our decorations for years. It's really exciting to see the community come together. Uh, we have a silent auction. We have businesses from all over the community donating amazingly valuable and exciting items that people bid on, um, come through, they get their dessert plates, they eat, they visit. We have music, we have, mm -hmm. uh, we have a DJ this year spinning numbers for our Sweet 16. Nice. Um, we also have a raffle, Creative Gems, mm -hmm. uh, and every year makes us a custom item. This year it's a beautiful diamond and pink topaz pendant and you can have a chance to win it for $5. It's an $1,800 pendant. Wow, yeah. so you can, so you know, prizes, fun, good Jewelry, cause. yeah. And, and chocolate, right, yes, Mike? Yes, lots Absolutely. of chocolate. Yeah. Now, now you brought some samples, didn't you, Mike? We did. Um, uh -huh. our, our chef put something together to bring in today. Uh -huh. uh, it's not the one that won last year, but it's uh, it's a chocolate. It could be a winner this year. It could be. Yeah. We'll, we'll, right. You'll have to come and see. You know. well, well, Death by Chocolate, again, the, the date is when? March 3rd, Tuesday, March 3rd, so from 5.30 to 8 p.m. at Marina Civic Center. At the Marina Civic yes. Center. Okay, we're not going to miss that. we got to run off to a break. But, Mike, maybe you can introduce me to the genius of a chef that created uh, uh, these chocolate delights, and maybe we'll get the sample some. Absolutely. All right, we'll All right. be right back after these messages with Death by Chocolate. Welcome back to the show. We're talking about Death by Chocolate with Mike Howe and Laurie, with an I, Harris, <laughs> who is the chef at the Panama Country Club. Welcome to the show, Laurie. Thank you. Thanks for having us this morning. Yeah, thanks for being had <laughs> because <laughs> you came with gifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you had the, the winning uh, entry last year in Death by Chocolate. And, and what was that? A white chocolate bread pudding. White chocolate bread pudding, which sounds delish. Is it white chocolate? Is it technically chocolate? I guess it is. Well, it's got ch chocolate in the name, I right? Now, what is this that I'm looking at, Lori? Triple chocolate whoopie pie. Triple chocolate whoopie pie. You just made that up, didn't you? We did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, now, where did you get this recipe from? Just winging it. We know a light cake uh, form. It's, it's a Amish. Uh, dessert mm -hmm. that was made a lot up north, so we just put it together last night and went so with it. So through multiple inspirations from mm -hmm. the Amish country, mm -hmm. uh, you, you've come up with this triple chocolate whoopie pie. Now, is this going to be your entry this year, or we're not sure yet? You're not sure. Yeah, we're going to okay. wing it this year again. So you just get really creative with the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike, what's it like having such a creative genius on staff there at the uh, Panama Country Club? It's fun. Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, she's got a lot of. A lot of good ideas and, and uh, shoots from the hip a lot of times. So, Do you, and you, I guess you get to sample her creations from time to time. That's the, that's the fun part. Yeah, that's one, one of the the perks, I guess. It, now, Lori, uh, it's not just desserts that you that you cook. I mean, you've got a whole repertoire, I'm sure, with a full menu at Panama Country Club. We do. We serve a lot of fresh steaks and seafood, and uh, a lot of outside events. So we cater, uh, do weddings. Just a lot of. From day to day, it's different every day what we do. Now, are you going to be at Death by Chocolate? Are you going to go? Yes, I probably oh, will gonna, this year. Okay. Uh, and you're not going to be just behind the scenes pushing the chocolate out there. You're going to be actually participating. I should. Can you vote for your own entry? I wonder. Is that legit? Can you do it? I see presidential uh, candidates vote for uh, themselves all the time. Mm -hmm. You see it on TV on election day. You should be able to vote for yourself early and often. We'll have to check the rules on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, I, you know, this This is calling me, and if you don't mind, I'm going to try some of this uh, uh, chocolate, triple chocolate whoopie pie out, mm -hmm. and, we'll, and I'll be the judge of how good this yes. is and whether or not it should be a winner. You care to join me, anyone? Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, triple chocolate whoopie pie. Don't mind my fingers. I swear to God, I just washed my hands. <laughs> All right, here, here you go. All right, everybody's got to try some of this. Now, it's getting near the end of the show, so I'm going to have to close out here in just a minute. Please, have some of your creation, or, or unless you're sick of it, of course, 
I'm licking my fingers. It's something I, <laughs> I never get sick of chocolate because this is like one of the perks of this little job here we've got here at Fox 28 is we get to sample some of the stuff like that. Okay, I'm putting my judge hat on and let's see how this goes. Mmm. There's really no polite way to eat on TV. Is there? I mean, it's always kind of gross. I always hate that when you see people eating on TV. I just hate that. All right. You've been watching Waking Up with Don. Death by Chocolate. Don't miss it. We'll see you next time.